Now, if you knew nothing about this song and I asked you, how many choruses does this song have? Where are the choruses? Does it have a bridge? How many verses are there? To navigate this session, you'd really have to know from beginning to end what the song is. That is, in fact, if you're not utilizing what's called the arrangement tool. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to take your sessions from looking kind of messy like this to now looking like this, where you have a clearly defined arrangement that you can not only navigate a lot better, but if you're also looking to create new arrangements of songs and tracks, the arrangement tool is something that you're gonna to wanna to make use of. Hey everyone, my name is Chris Green. Today's video is all about the arrangement tool and PreSonus Studio One. Let's jump on in. I'm gonna show you how to build an arrangement from scratch and also how I'm using it in this song, Georgia Still On My Mind. Now, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do to access the arrangement tool, you wanna to go up to the top left of the screen here next to the Add Tracks button. If you click this Global Track Visibility, you have what's called the Arranger. Make sure that that is checked. When you first open up the Arrangement Viewer, you're probably not gonna have any arrangement there. You're gonna to have to create your own. But as you can see, I have an intro, verse, chorus, this is a turnaround, verse two, chorus two, bridge, and so forth. Click the I for the inspector on the left. So as you can see, I've got my arrangements over here. If I click on chorus two, there's actually a color swab that I can right click. And on the track right here, I can change this chorus two to be green. I can change it to be orange. However you wanna label all of these is totally up to you. Also on the inspector view, I can double click and I can change what says verse two. I can make this say verse three. I can double click where it says bridge. I can put bridge down and so forth. So if you make use of the inspector window, that's gonna be useful for you. Also when you're mixing tracks and putting in plugins, the inspector tool is good to have open. Just make sure you've clicked where it says Arranger because if you don't click where it says Arranger, your inspector view is just gonna be showing you tracks with plugins and things like that. So let's zoom in here to where it says Chorus 2. If I go to where Chorus 2 begins, right on measure 67, and I hit play, we hear this. Bags have long been packed and rolled away. Which is of course the beginning of Chorus 2. Here's a cool thing you can do with the Arranger window. If I wanted Chorus 2 to go before verse 3 for some strange reason, I can just click and drag up here in the Arrangement Viewer. I can click and drag this entire Chorus 2 and put it in front of verse 3. So now there's a blue vertical line in front of verse 3. If I drop it, as you can see, it's shifted everything. So now we're going from this turnaround immediately into Chorus 2. These have long been packed. Now, of course, that's an awkward transition. So whenever you're moving things around in the arrangement, just be very careful that you're not clicking and dragging when you don't intend to. The other option it had is if I took this chorus two and I dropped it on top of verse three, let's see what that does. So now verse three has completely been removed and we've replaced it with chorus two and everything behind chorus two shifted with it. So that's another thing you can do. Control Z to undo that move. Another thing is how do we adjust the length of these? Well, if I wanted Chorus 2 to be shorter, I could click and drag, make Chorus 2 this section here. And if I double click in the Arrangement Viewer, now I can have a new section. Again, just clicking and dragging to extend this bar here. And I can call this Chorus 2B. Now everything you're seeing is an arrangement that I've created of a song that we've already worked on. Let's open up a brand new starting from scratch session in PreSonus Studio One. And I'll show you how you can actually set up the arrangement viewer before you start recording anything, which to me is the best way to go. So I have a brand new session here in PreSonus Studio One. This is very common if you're not using a template. I'm gonna close the browse window down here at the bottom right. And at the top, again, I wanna go next to where it has the add track button and click this and make sure my arrangement viewer is open. The first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna give myself a few measures of a buffer, okay? You don't always have to start recording right on measure one. I'd recommend probably going to measure five and I'm gonna go up here to where the arrangement tool is right below the measure. I'm gonna double click within measure five and look what happens. If I double click, I've got now an intro tab that's only one measure long. If I want the intro to be longer, I go to the beginning of measure six and I can extend this out or I can make it shorter to where it's only half of a measure or so. I'm gonna make the intro to this song about four measures. I'm gonna go immediately to the right of the intro and I'm gonna double click again. Now it's 
guessing, okay? So it's not necessarily that I have to start with a verse. It's just PreSone Studio One is making a guess that after your intro, you're probably gonna have a verse. After the verse, there's a chorus. After the chorus, there's a bridge. And let's see what it does, outro, okay? But let's say you don't wanna use any of those. One of the things I recommend is after you've created your intro tab, just go ahead and extend it to the length of what you think the entire song is going to be. So I've got this song going all the way to about measure 105. If I click three on the keyboard, I've now got my slice tool. What you can do with the slice tools, you can actually slice your arrangement. So I've got the intro starting on measure five. I want that to be four measures, so I'm gonna make a cut. And then I've got, let's say, a verse. And my verse, I want it to be, that's five, six, seven, I want it to be eight measures, and then let's make this the chorus, turn around, verse two, and so forth. As you can see, point I'm making is you can use the slice tool to create your tabs, and then, like I was saying earlier, open up the inspector window, and now we can change the names of these. If I double click on the inspector window, I can call this verse one. After verse one, I can call this pre-chorus. After pre-chorus, I can do chorus, turn around, and so forth. Then we have verse two. Now to change the colors of these, I'm just gonna right click where it says intro. And then there's a blue square. I'm gonna click that little color block. This will also work on your tracks, your buses. Anytime you wanna change the color of something, just look for the little blue square. I'm gonna make the verses blue. The intro is purple. The pre-chorus, let's just make it yellow. And then the choruses, we'll make those red, okay? So that is your introduction to the arrangement tool. And the thing that makes this great is that as you're recording tracks, just like I had on Georgia Still in My Mind, if you're grabbing your guitar and you're looking to put in a part specifically on the chorus, well now when you know where the chorus is, you can skip right to that section. So it makes navigating your songs so much easier, you're ready to go, you're not wasting time trying to navigate through and figure out, okay, did the chorus start on measure 21? I don't have to think about that because I've got these tabs pulled up. Now to extend the chorus, like I said, we can move it out here to measure 31. If you do that, it is gonna make the turnaround shorter. So like I said earlier, the thing you wanna be careful of is when you start moving these around and shifting them, just be aware that everything I've got, if I select this chorus tab, all the tracks within that chorus are now gonna be affected if I move it around, and that can really mess you up. If you're doing loop-based recording, this is a must-use tool so that you are able to make your process super quick and efficient when you're using those loops, because most of the time loops, they don't have what's called like a spill over or any sort of pre-roll going into the loops. They start right on beat one, just easier to navigate. If for some reason you're just sick of seeing the arrangement view, you can go up here and make sure that it's unselected and I, of course, will hide it. But feel free to have fun with your arrangements. Once you've got everything labeled, you should be freed up to mix and match, move things around. Just make sure you hit Control Z or Command Z on the Mac keyboard so that you can undo any mistakes that you make. Make sure you're taking a listen through anytime you're moving arrangements around. Another thing that you can do is you can actually click where it says Chorus and you can duplicate. So if you duplicate the chorus, again, like I've said, anything that's below this track label is gonna get duplicated as well. And as you duplicate, it shifts all the other labels, all the other arrangement parts down. So if you have a chorus that's based on loops, you can just right click up here, go to copy, and then go anywhere you want in the arrangement and command or control V, and you can paste it wherever you want. So as you can see, this can save you a lot of time. It's all about saving time, especially if you're putting down background vocals or things that you're layering in. Know where you're at using the arrangement tool. Your sessions will be so much more organized. It'll be a lot nicer to look at because you've got colors and labels all over the place. And hopefully it makes your recording a little bit more fun instead of a hassle. I hope that gives you something to work on with PreSonus Studio One. Make use of that arrangement tool. It'll make your sessions go a lot faster, a lot smoother, less of a headache because you know where you're navigating within your session. And then if you're recalling a song weeks and months later, you're not having to remember exactly what measure the chorus started on. If you're producing tracks and you're using a lot of loops, duplicating a chorus, 
copying an entire section of tracks will certainly save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches as well. My name is Chris Green. The whole channel is about music production tips and advice just like this. I hope you've enjoyed the video and will consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. And I'll see you at the next video. Take care.